Hi friends, I'm Grace Baxter from gracenotesfortoday.blogspot.com. I'm so excited to share something that I figured out today in the Cricut Design Space, and I know you're going to love it. If you are like me and enjoy making your own sentiments, your own titles, and your own artwork for your walls, then you are going to appreciate this. I'm going to show you how you can create your own texts using your own fonts that are already on your computer. And you will not have to go anywhere but in the Cricut Design Space to do this. So let me take you there now. Okay, here are some sentiments that I made just a, a little while ago playing around with different fonts. And again, these were all fonts on my computer. You'll have different ones of your own that I'm sure you're going to want to use. But for right now, I'm going to show you how I did these. So you'll notice that they all have shadows. And they're all, they're all different colors. I could make them whatever colors I want. But they're quite unique. So I'm going to demonstrate for you how you can do one. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide some of these that I've made. And I'll leave this hello there kind of as a reference. We're going to walk through the steps on how to make this very fun hello greeting. So we go to the text uh, button, click there, and just type the word hello. And I'll drag it over and I will stretch it nice and big so that we can all see it. And because this is a writing font, not one of Cricut's, mind you, it's one of my own. It is a script font. I'm going to want to connect the letters because let's face it, that looks silly. So to connect letters, we go over here, uh, we go to the layers, sorry, the edit menu, and we click this little button here that says isolate letters. Now I can move these individual letters around. So I'm going to use my arrow keys and I'm going to bump this one to the left. Do the same with the next L. Bump it over until the little leader uh, piece of the letter is hidden and it looks as though it was written this way. Bump this one over. One more. There we go. Now I'm going to want to, uh, right now, as we can see in our layers panel, each letter is on its own layer. We know that if I go to cut this, it's going to want to cut it as an indivi each individual letter. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is select all of these letters together and then click Weld. And the reason I'm not welding the H is it's the capital and I don't want it that, um, I don't want it to have to touch the letters. But I am going to move it over a little closer. So we'll bump it over using the right arrow key. There we go. Now I want the H to become part of the LO. As we can see over here, they're currently on two layers. So we'll do the same thing again. And we're now, we're not going to weld it, but we are going to make this a group. So with them all selected, both parts of the word, I go down here and click group. And now I can move it all around and it's treated as one image. But now we need to make the shadow. And here's where it gets fun. With this all selected, and you can see it says group, the whole thing is selected, go all the way down to duplicate and click duplicate. And now we have an exact copy of what we just created in its own group. But I don't like the colors of these much. I, I, we already did the sample one in Aqua. So I think I'm gonna change the hello. So with this one selected, I see it over here. I'll click on the Hello part, <laughs> and we'll choose the rose pink. That's kind of nice, that bright pink. And then I'll do the same for the H, make it rose pink. I really like that. Now for my shadow. I don't want an aqua behind there. So I'm going to go in here, and instead of the rose pink, I'm going to choose this darker fuchsia color. But you know what? It's still just a little too purpley for me. It's a, I want it brighter. So you see this little circle over here. That shows me where the color is coming from. I'm going to, using my mouse, see the crosshairs of my mouse that I'm wiggling? I'm going to move it farther to the right to make it brighter. 
because on this scale, you can see that the brightest colors are on the right, and then as you move left, they fade out. So I want it brighter and just a shade darker right there. I'm going to make click there. And we can see in the sample here, this is the color I'm going to end up with. Now that's the color I want, and I can see it's going to look very nice as a shadow. And I have to do the same with the H. Now when I click on the H, how am I going to remember where on this place I clicked? It could be just off a of hair. Here's what I'm going to do. This color that I've just selected shows me its color number up here. So I'm going to highlight all of the letters and numbers, leave the number symbol there, highlight those, and copy by either clicking right and choosing copy or just hit Control C and it copies it. Now let's click the H. And there's our aqua. We're going to backspace out all but the number sign. And I'm going to paste that in by hitting Control V. Now it matches the rest of the word. So here we are with our shadow. But the H and, and all of that, it, this is one group and this is another group. Now I want the shadow, of course, to go behind this. And currently it wants to go in front. So with it selected, go up to Arrange move to back and now as I drag it you'll see it sliding up behind our word now don't release the mouse yet as long as I have still got the mouse depressed with my finger I can move it around I mean I could always move it around after too but you are going to see this little black box without the position as I do that now notice the way the that the word changes if I want it to just look like it is a double of that, I can, but I don't really like that. I like the shadow to sit very closely to the word. And as in the aqua hello above, I positioned it in this kind of a way so that the shadow was to the left of the word. For the pink one, I think I'm going to move it to the right. And I like that very much. Now you'll notice as I pull it, if I pull it straight to the right, you're going to see that it looks as though we're standing in front of this word hello and we're just to the right of it looking back and seeing the, the three dimension of it. If we drag the shadow down, it looks as though we're standing down below the word and looking up. And if we drag the shadow to the top, it looks as though we're standing up and the, sh and the word is down on the wall down below. So it's a very different, this is called extrusions or extruding in typography. So if I want to um, extrude it so that the, the shadow is to the right, I like that. And I also don't want a lot of white showing. I'm going to release it for a minute. And now that I've released it, I do see there's a little bit of white. So what I'll do to fix that, I'm going to zoom in and I'll center using the, the um, scroll bar right in front of me. And now I can see, oh yes, there's some white there. I don't like the white. So I'm going to choose the top layer and move it over. And now that it's zoomed in, it's 125%, I can clearly see that I don't have any white showing, and I like that look. That, to me, looks fabulous. One thing, a comment I want to make about these fonts is if you're looking for a, a script font such as these, you will want that's one that's chunky enough, like this one. This particular font is called Dancing Script. It's flowy, it's fun, it's youthful, but it's also, I chose it for its thickness because when it's cut out, I want it to be something substantial. Now, I don't have to have it this big, of course. As I'm clicking there, um, I can see how big it is. So right now, it's showing that it's ready to cut. And we're not going to just cut this out, because it, if we did that, we can see that it would cut out the shadow, and down here it would cut out the pink, and I don't want that. I want it to first print. And so what I'm going to do is select this group is selected and holding my control down, I will select the shadow group. A quick way to do that, of course, is highlight them all 
And now that automatically selects them all. And then choose uh, flatten. Now, I see something I don't like. And again, I'm picky about it. I don't like that I still see a little bit of white. So I am going to undo that action. I'm going to zoom in again to 150% and make sure. Ah, there it is. You see when it's zoomed in that big, we can see a little hairline, little hairlines of white. I don't want that white. So I'm going to click on this and move it over and maybe just a hair down. And now I can see that I fixed that. I don't see any hairline now. So here we go again. Select it all. Both groups are selected. Click flatten. And now I want to see, oh, there's a little bit showing there, but you can, you can play with it a little bit more. Maybe I will again. Okay, click the whole thing. Select the whole thing, come on. Group, 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 flatten. When you wanna select from here and you want more than one group, sometimes they are separated. Sometimes you'll see the one up here that you want and the other one you want is way, way down there. So you, you choose them, more than one group, by just holding the control and clicking on the ones you want. Now they are all flattened. Do you see that? Flattened set, and that's this whole hello here is flattened. Let's see how that will appear. First, I'm going to hide the green one, the turquoise one, and we'll go, click go, as though we are ready to print. And you'll notice over here that it's showing us the little printer, it's ready to cut this out. Fabulous. And that's all there is to it. I will unzoom this or zoom out. And I will reveal these others again. And there they all are. And my latest one that I just made. Tuck it down there. And that's how you make them. So easy. I can think of a million ways and a million phrases. Um, you, you will have absolutely no uh, restrictions, really, as to what you can create. This little one over here that I did for I Love Spring, uh, I did the shadowing and all of that first, and, and I just had the word spring, and I thought, you know what? I think I want a little phrase that says I love spring. So I did that, created this one. And I can make it as big as I want. Two shades of green, I really like that. I like the font, I love the G. A lot of times it's the G letter that I don't like <laughs> because it'll do a funny squiggly G. Anyway, there it is. So that's how you do it. You choose your fonts in the beginning and then you play with them, uh, you create the shadow. It has to do with grouping, grouping, creating the duplicate, making that duplicate the shadow, changing its color to be the shadow, placing it where you want it to be, and then grouping them and flattening them to print and cut. That's all there is to it. All done in this wonderful program of Cricut Design Space. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know I have. I've enjoyed working on it. And when I realized how much fun it is, I can't wait to get busy making slogans and signs and home decor items, all sorts of things. With this technique, phrases, oh, I could even do tote bags with people's names on them, uh, gifts for couples that are getting married, anniversary gifts, all kinds of things are possible with the hundreds of fonts available to us for free. There you go. If you liked this and you found value in this video, would you please click the like button below, uh, below the video in YouTube? And, um, and leave me a comment. I love to hear your comments. And let me know also if you do use my, my system here for creating your own shadowed words. I'd love to see your projects. So that's it for now. Have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you again soon with more font fun. 